Hi, and welcome back to Box of Delights. In this film, I want to show you a Kickstarter preview of Adapt ADAPT. It's a dice and card game, and we're trying to evolve these two guppies. You're evolving these fish, not so much evolution uh, through generations, but mutations of a single specimen. Okay, so you're going to be doing damage, and this actual fish will, you know, mutate in the water and try to survive this battle to become the master fish. Everything you see here is prototype right now. Uh, we've got some of the artwork finalised. A lot of the artwork isn't finalised, so you'll see placeholder art on some of these cards. Uh, but these are your guppies. These are the fish that you'll be starting out with. These are the player mats. At the moment, like I say, they're just, just prototype. I'm going to set up a two-player game. You get enough components for, for three players, obviously. Um, and that'll include a set of polyhedral, the role-playing game, standard set of dice. You get three sets of dice in this game, so there's a lot of value in the dice. I've just picked up my own. Like I said, I'm going to set up a two-player game here just to demonstrate how this game plays. So let's grab a couple of guppies. We've got a red guppy and a green one. For the video, I'm just going to set it up side by side like, like so. Normally you would have them facing each other across the table. All right. There's our two guppies, our two starting fish. We've got a D10 that's going to be used to track damage. This value here next to the heart is your health. So should your damage ever rise to your health, then you'll kill your opponents have defeated you. The other values we see here are survival, and then lethality and ferocity, both which are not applicable for red guppy. This red guppy is not in a position to attack anybody. Survival is kind of like your defensive ability. We'll explain these things as we get into the game. We're going to be buying cards from the Gene Stream. And the Gene Stream is populated here from these cards. So we don't know what's coming. Let's take a look. So these are body parts, if you like. We've got a horn, a dorsal fin, and then an organ, an internal organ. And you can see these have modifiers on them, so they can modify the attributes of your fish. And then this is the cost, 8, 4, 10. And it's these things that you're going to use to build and mutate your fish. You'll notice these yellow corners, they kind of show you where it matches with the player board, where on the player board these would go. Yeah? Okay. So that's the gene stream. So how do we pay this experience currency. Well, this is what this D20 is all about. All right, you start with one experience. We don't have much money to spend. The players do get three experience at the beginning of each turn, all right, just to kind of keep you ticking over, because you want to keep, keep mutating, keep evolving. Okay, now for the start of the game, um, we're all kind of set up and ready to go, really, but we do have a little starting bonus, just to get us going. Each player has these percentile dice, two D10s, one's for the tens, one's for the units. We'll give them a roll. So 55. For the red. And 67 for the green. And this result's going to give us a bonus. The higher result takes their bonus first. So 67 is the highest. And we have a chart in the set of instructions that tells us a result of 1 to 20 games is 4 experience. And then you can either gain the cards in streams 1, 2 and a 3. Or 81 to 100 a, a card of your choice. So we've got a 67. So we gain the card in stream slot number 3. So we take this card, we just gain it. When we gain a card, we can either adapt it or put it in our personal gene pool for adapting later. And there's rules here. This one costs 10 experience and it's a level 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You see how all 5 bars are filled in here. And you can't adapt anything more than 2 levels above your body level. So we're level 0 at the moment. So levels 1 and 2 are fine. So we're going to have to put this in our gene pool. We're not developed enough yet to take on the, the sawtooth shark's horn. Okay, so we're going to put that in our 
personal gene pool. I should also add that the, the rules do have like some variants, like there's a gaming with your guppies variant, like a, a children's variant that removes some of the more complicated um, modifications, like the like the, the horns there. Um, and I should also add too that you know if you buy two sets, you can play up to six, um, and there are expansions. These expansions will allow you to play up to six as well. Uh, but the base game out of the box, two to three. It's the red player's turn next, but we've got to recycle the gene pool. So that just means shuffling everything down, drawing a new card, and what do we get? The sailfish, a dorsal fin. Giving a bonus to health, to survival, and to the ferocity. Red rolled a 55, so that is game card number two in the gene stream. We'll take this one, that's a level four, it's the poison sack. Now you will keep your personal gene pool. There we go, we've got some blubber, some skin here. Um, you can see the artwork here as placeholder. You will keep your personal gene pool face up because there are all rules about what value of cards you can have in your personal gene pool. Thematically, consider this like, um, well this is how they describe it, like a genetic holding cell for your body. It's kind of bubbling under the surface in your DNA waiting to mutate, but it's parts that you can't yet adapt. You can only have three cards in your personal gene pool any time. But the other thing is with buying bodies, when you put bodies in here, I mean bodies are the driving thing really, they determine what level you are and what parts you can, uh, you can adapt. What you can't do is kind of stockpile bodies of a lower level than you already have. Okay, because you could kind of block the game if you kept bodies and stopped your opponents getting a lower level body than you. Okay, that's enough, I think, of the rules. Let's get going. Uh, highest number rolled goes first. Uh, first thing we do is on our turn is gain three experience, right? So we go from one, two, four. And now there are a couple of good cards in here already for me. We've got the great white shark dorsal fin. It costs four. It gives me plus one health. Um, and it also adds one to my lethality. doesn't help me with ferocity, though. Your fish can't attack unless it's ferocious. Okay? So, how lethal is his bite? Can he bite? <laughs> okay? So our guppies can't attack until they've got at least, the rules tell us, at least plus two to their ferocity. Right? So our guppies are not going to be able to bite anyway. It's a good one to keep aside. And I could always just keep the experience and try and save up for something like the Sailfish Fin, which will give me that ferocity. Or I could take the Blubber. I think that's the one I'm going to take. It's level 2, so I can adapt it straight away. Remember, I'm level 0, so I can adapt anything from 0, 1 and 2, my current level plus 2. And it gives me plus 5 health, um, though it does take one away from my survival rating. I like the fact that it gives me... So I'm going to go for a blubbery um, skin for my green guppy. So we'll pay the four experience. This goes down to zero. And we'll place it in the relevant spot. You'll also notice that my blubber now gives me a bonus ability. This one says resist ram too. If somebody's got a horn and they're trying to ram me... <laughs> Sorry, it's one of those <laughs> a childish horn joke. Okay, if um, if I've got resist ram two, then someone tries to ram me, then I'm resistant to that type of attack. Okay. Uh, to end our turn, we'll recycle the gene pool. So now it's the red player's turn. So they get their three uh, experience. And again, we could take this one, or we could happily swim around. Gaining experience, um, waiting for this stuff to recycle. But uh, we'll, we'll we'll take it. I think um, to grab things when you can. I think is the the best advice. So it's going to cost four experience. It's a level two, so the guppy can put on this shark's fin and recycle the gene stream. Okay, there's a body. It's a flying fish, but it's level three. That's no good for a green player who takes his three experience. That's going to cost nine. So 
So with nothing to do, there's an 8 cost, 8 cost, 9 cost. We can wipe the gene stream. You can't wipe the gene stream if there's a body in there at a level low enough that another player can adapt it. All right, so you can't wipe it to remove a body. Um, again, remove that blocking tactic that you might adopt. Okay, so we've got a swordfish, a flying fish, and a lionfish side. Oh, that's one that the other player could pick up. Um, but this is the thing, because you've taken your action now, the turn is going to pass. First dibs on wiping the, the fresh gene stream is going to go to the other player. So the, it's compensation, you get an extra three experience. So his experience goes up to six. Back to the red player, they get their starting three. We can't afford anything just yet. So we're going to have to wipe the gene stream again. Now in the early game you might be doing this quite a lot just to get things going, because you're looking for those bodies that allow you to upgrade. All right, so you're just cycling through this thing until, oh there we go, an anglerfish, level 2 body. Um, now we can't wipe the gene string. You know, for as long as there's a body in here that someone can adapt, we can't wipe it. All right, so someone's got to pick up that body before this thing can be wiped again. And it's going to be the green player. Um, red takes their 3 bonus for the wiping. Run to our turn, so six to nine, the extra three experience. So nine experience means I can buy anything from here. We've got an eight, a six, and a six. So let's buy this body, um, because it's a level two. We can jump straight from Guppy to level one or level two. Once we're at level two, the next body has to be a three, then a four, and then a five. Okay. But as a level two now, we can take parts up to level four. Yeah, so an anglerfish body is a is a good a good place to start, and it's got a ferocity three, a health of twelve, and a survival rating of four. So I'm going to take this one and adapt it. It's going to cost me six, so experience goes down to three, and let's replace that guppy body. Let's just place it over the top. We are now an anglerfish. <laughs> Pretty neat, huh? With twelve plus five health because of our blubber, so we're a blubbery anglerfish. Uh, our survival is still four minus one, three. But now we can start doing some attacking. Recycle. And, and we get another body. This time it's a sea bass. Um, red player takes their three. We're going to spend three, so back down to six, and take the sea bass body. We can still use the great white shark body part. Why don't we look at the possibility of attacking? Because we've got a ferocity of three now. And then you've got an icon on here which shows you what attack die you roll. It's a picture of a d6, so we're going to roll a d6. And we're going to add to that our ferocity. Okay, make sense? Okay, so d one d6 plus three gives us four. That's our attack value. In defence, the, the sea bass needs to look at his survival rating from his body and any uh, attached body parts. So the survival rating on the sea bass is just a 4. Okay. Now, notice though that this thing has this fear bonus. Now, what this says actually is that, that their attack's not going to be successful. They're going to We'll come in, take a look at the fear, and then scoot off in fear. Uh, but it's only a fear one. Total up all the body parts um, that have fear. Roll a d10. If the result is less than or equal to your fear total, then they run scared. All right. So anything other than a one, <laughs> it was a one. All right. So the attack wouldn't have gone through. So they run scared. That's it. They can't attack. They're uh, swimming back into the bushes. They took a look at that fin. And no, uh, they don't like the look of it. And they can't take another action now. That's it. So it's time for some revenge, I feel. Let's take our three experience. Moves up to nine. And why don't we attack? We have a ferocity of two on the, uh, the sea bass. 
and the attack die is a d4. Okay, one of our triangular pyramidal d4s. Not a huge attack. So we're looking for four d4, one d4 plus two from our ferocity. Okay, roll a two. So two plus two is four. Gives us an attack of four. And now we have to compare it to their survival rating. Four minus one is three. A three survival rating. Four versus three. Our attack total is greater than their survival total, so the attack is successful. The amount of damage it does is the difference between the two, which is one. We're going to do one damage, but we get a bonus for our lethality. And this is where things like the, the great white shark's dorsal fin comes in handy. It does plus one damage, so two damage. Not a problem for our blubbery anglerfish because we have 17 health in total. A long way to go. Let's go back to our anglerfish. Take our experience. I think I might buy this bioelectricity. Our blubbery anglerfish is now bioelectric. And our sharky looking sea bass you could use this brain. So, um, yeah, we're going to make him nice and intelligent, I think. So, let's put this back down to six. Incidentally, if you let your experience, oh, that's a nice one, if you let your experience go up. To 20 you get an auto adapt and what that means is you just keep recycling the gene stream until you find a body that you can level up to yeah, and, it, that, and that happens just the first time each game what it means is you can sit and accumulate experience and still be able to adapt so if this gene stream isn't recycling um, as quickly as it needs to it only takes a few turns before one of you will auto adapt anyway and get that body upgrade that allows you to start building and attacking and becoming that masterful fish. Now let's show you another attack. <laughs> I, can't <laughs> I can't wait to show you another attack. Alright, so um, I want to show this by electricity. Anglerfish is going to attack with his d6. Let's roll. We get uh, Frosty 3. So it's 5 plus 3 is. Eight. Wow, that's a good number. Eight. Versus a survival of four. Now the brain gives him a plus one, so a survival of five. So that would be three damage, plus any ferocity. Now the thing about ferocity is this damage can never go above four. So even if I was like, um, sorry, lethality, even if I had lethality two, right, that wouldn't be three plus two is five. It's always maxed out at four. But this is where shock comes in, because shock, this is shock one, bioelectricity, shock one, okay? That doesn't count towards that four limit. So I would do the four damage, and then I'd still get the extra one for the shock, right? So that's the only way of getting these extra damages, is to use your body parts, special bonuses, okay? So for more than four damage. As it stands, I've got three plus one, that's going to be four damage. We've done a massive hit on the sea bass, who... His health is only uh, 9, 8 plus 1. I forgot to roll for fear. Let's do that first. Anything other than a 1 is a 9. Okay, okay. So the damage did go through. The attack did go through. Okay, brilliant. Our oh, experience goes up to 12. We're getting close to that auto adopt. I might just keep attacking. Cartilage is good, it gives you armour. Actually, I'm going to take that. Eight. Yeah, it costs four. Uh, it gives me plus one health and armor of one. This armor of one, uh, this is one, right? So this is going to reduce any damage dealt by one. 
So if, instead of taking four, I would have only taken three damage that time. And obviously you can accumulate these things. Incidentally, there's lots of these different types of bonuses. You don't have to remember them all. There's a, there's a reference guide for you to, to use. Uh, so we go on. Join me in a couple of minutes and uh, we'll see how things turn out. Hi, welcome back. I've actually reached a decent point to show you with this great white shark costing 12 experience. Well, not too far away from being at level 4 and being quite ferocious and being able to do quite a lot of damage. I really like the game. You know, it's one of those Kickstarters. There's, there's a lot going on Kickstarter all the time. So when I see something that takes, you know, grabs my attention, then um, I'm going to go for it. They've got another game coming up called King's Armory. Look. Um, it, then I'm going to go for it and, and try and show it to you and share it to you because anything with this kind of theme is an easy sell for me. But you can see the artwork's going to be beautiful. They're really, really good. It's not, you know, it's it's great to look at. And with all these different abilities and powers and all the different stuff you can you can find. I and mean, what we've got here, heart with regeneration. You know, there's so much stuff in here. I do quite look forward to being a level. For octopus, here's the the great white shark's mouth, so you can get the benefits of being a great white shark, and then upgrade yourself uh, to be even more ferocious. Um, and just building up your fish, and and you know having it tell a story. I mean, the, with the dolphin, for example, I mean you can see that he's got you know very little in the way of um, lethality. He's quite ferocious, but he's got high health, high survival, and he can do these ramming attacks, ram two. And he's got quite a good um, attack die there as well. I'm not totally sold on the graphic design here. I think for new players it's difficult, but once you're playing and know what you're doing, then not a problem at all. And these are easy, these are good, the artwork's great. It's really only these two that that bothered me when I first started playing, but... You know, you, you can get used to them very quickly. Finally, I'd just like to add that the way that the gene stream recycles and the fact that you've got this auto-adapt, and also an exception case where if there's no action you can take, then you do this random mutation. All these things, I mean, those things in themselves allow the game to, you know, get through that opening very, very quickly. Um, and it shows how mature the design is and it's it's obviously been well tested to get you into the action as quickly as possible and then the, the decisions are all about you know do I do I build on my body do I build my experience do I grab uh, body parts you know and you've got to make sure that you can you can mature and mutate quickly enough that you can withstand uh, an opponent who who is building the capacity to to attack you and bring you down so congratulations to Gatekeeper Games and to the designer John Rock and good luck with their Kickstarter. Thanks for watching.